When I first reviewed Tulip all the way back in 2014, I did so by starting the whole thing off with a Game Grumps reference. In retrospect, that shit was pretty high up on the old cringeometer. Well, that and they also broke up around the time and had stopped making videos completely. Also, uh, John Tron is a fucking neo-Nazi now anyway. <laughs> Wealthy, bl uh, they do. Wealthy blacks also commit more crime than poor whites. That's a fact. In the United Wait, States. I'm simply arguing oh, that they no. can't. Oh, no. 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 Oh, Pittoresque, or picturesque if you want to be all American about it, is to be visually attractive, especially in a quaint or charming way. Which is the word that came to mind instantly upon first seeing Tulip's visuals. Everything is just so tiny and cute and adorably detailed, like ones walking around in a model table of some rural Japanese town. However, you suck, and weren't able to build any of your own models to put on in there, thus resorting to fighting any and old crappy figure, promptly plopping them about town. This explains why the police officer looks like one of those old hollow metal figures, the doctor like something out of a Scandinavian kitchen show, and the creepy BDSM man looks like something out of the creepy BDSM man Barbie plays at. Dude, what the fuck? And that's also the thing, this pittoresque village is home to some truly fucked up shit beneath its quaint visage. The inspiration behind Tulip came from its director Yoshiro Kimura, traveling around Europe and noticing how people tend to kiss her out in the public open, which in Japan you can't do without being shot. And so you play as a young boy named Ned, who ends up bumping into a young girl named Ned who will only be willing to make baby if Ned can manage to become a Truman, which he does by going around kissing all of the townsfolk to strengthen his heart. Which you will need to do as well, as kissing someone at the wrong time will result in a rape whistle and a quick ass blast to the face. <laughs> I'm uh, gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> this game kinda sucks to play. Much like The Legend of Zelda, an equally mean-spirited cunt of a game, it came with a manuel pretty much serving as a type of walkthrough. I did not know this as I purchased the game off of PSN like a normal person and ended up dying over and over, eventually getting frustrated and quitting halfway through. My review naturally did not reflect this because I sucked, but there you go. The cat is up and the jig is officially out of the bag. Everything hurts. Every interaction or innocent examination can result in your death, which is an apt metaphor for all the apt metaphors what this game apt metaphors. I lived freely. Ned will do the same. You are not free. You are lazy. I am free. I am an artist, so I don't have to do anything. <laughs> My, uh, my life in a fucking nut right there. Sardonic is how I would describe Tulip's overall tone. Playgrounds will have warning signs telling you that literally all of the equipment is harmful and dangerous. Uh, and, I mean, let's be fair, a lot of them used to be. And the writing of the dialogue especially is full-on draped in this heavily ironic cynicism. Mr. Suzuki. Mr. Yamada. When are you going to pay me? Pay your employees their salaries. Our students don't come to school anymore. They stopped paying their tuition fees. Our school has no money. You have to take care of your employees. We don't have what we don't have. I don't care. It's not my problem. Pay your workers. It's hard not to read this in this dry monotone joke voice when shit's laid on this literally. Characters will often also straight up look into the camera addressing the player in a sassy fashion. And yeah, it's just a really bizarre fucking tone to say the least. A tone that easily could have fallen flat on its dick, but it actually works quite well strangely enough. Mainly due to how consistent it is, but also in how it manages to make you, the player, live and suffer alongside these characters through their mundanely strange daily routines. Hit him with the intro! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
Ignoring the fact that the game starts us off with a weird vagina face clit nose tree man and this. Everything in Tulip is equal parts funny, chill, and somewhat unsettling. The soundtrack especially hammers this home right away, using mischievous jazzy motifs hot wired in your brain as something's a Bruin music, yet at the same time also having these chill out in a bar at noon kind of vibes going on as well, already making for a weird contrast. Similarly, there's always angry crows and crickets, environmental sound affecting it up what feels super ominous, and of course there's the fact that everyone is just a smidge threatening and judgmental. See, Ned is a poor boy from a poor family, and he's also just moved here. Which in Japan basically makes you the human equivalent of the hurtful poopy found in Bin, and as such, Julep is part coming of age, poor person redemption arc, as it is a slow realization that being a poor boy ain't all too bad, given that the adults are infinitely more miserable than you'll ever be. Seriously, we got this starving loser musician living in a trailer, the grumpy old man just waiting out his final days, the evil granny who's mega judgmental, only because she's deeply sad and lonely inside. The doctor, who's full of shit and also horribly ill himself, ironically, and other touch relatable tropes like the suicidal electrical pole. Uh, I hate myself. I hate my life. I want to be happy. But what really makes me happy? What? And, much like an equally strange game and the second Zelda comparison, Majora's Ass, <laughs> Tulip runs on a timer with all of its town folk adhering to their daily routines, arcing and developing all over the fucking place. Like how the old man tends to his hoardage morning in the morning, goes inside at 10 with his doggo to run an antique shop, and goes out for a walk in the evening, usually settling down at home to listen to some sad music all on his own. Not to mention how the old lady spends full days sweeping the streets, keeping up the pretense of a social life while secretly getting drunk off her ass, and she also has sketchy secrets buried in her garden, or stuff like how Doc Fuck keeps saying he's too busy to talk to you only to pass out at his desk immediately after. Probably something to do with him having spent the entire night patrolling the streets as a fucking syringe demon. Yeah. Games, promotional and other consideration provided by Walmart. Hey guys, I'm going to play Starfort Battle Butt with my fans. I'm genuinely excited! <laughs> In a lot of ways, this game is as much of a celebration of small-town Japanese culture as it is a scathing critique of its traditionalist, selfless worker bee system it has found itself trapped in. And, uh... Especially if you're an artist, I can imagine that growing up in such an environment can suck ass. Uh, don't get me wrong, this shit would be boring to everyone, obviously, but in a sense, being creative, an artist of any variety, is in itself an act of arrogance. To want to express yourself is to value what you have to express in the first place. Wanting people to see it, leaving your mark on culture no matter how big or small. And so, if someone as such was forced to deal with the extreme pressures to perform in a formal work or school environment and was looked down upon for even so much as dressing differently, let alone gaining constant ire from their parents, peers and teachers for like being themselves and just drawing all day, then that person is probably gonna end up a wee bit fucking jaded and critical of said culture. And Tulip, whether by design or not, does feel like a product of set salt. Thing is, is that the town isn't actually all that happy of a place, as beneath it lies an underground society of freaks. The social outcasts, as it were. Fetishists, criminals, mentally ill people, outsider artists, the unemployed and unemployable, sociopath, and everyone else not befit of the system. Ironically, though, this is the exact group of people who keep the town running, maintaining its sewers and electrical systems, essentially making shit work whilst not being allowed to claim the fruits that this produces. Though to be fair, they may very well be better off this way, as the one true job opportunity what this town offers is the factory, which uh, looks more like a prison with armed guards and drill sergeants than anything. 
as the employees are reduced to nothing but bald featureless numbers, but the work for little pay day in and out with nay but shit for change in sight and not but a wee dream to hold on to. Subtle social commentary. Where it becomes more of a celebration though is in its general cuteness and atmosphere. A front for trash though the town may be, the entire game is coated in the warm glow of the sunset and the sounds of crickets fucking. It's kind of like a mixture between Persona 4, the first Animal Crossing, and social anxiety. There's all of the neatly detailed streets and shops, a husky bamboo thicket graveyard with a prison beneath it and the temple above it, the factory, and even a lonely little welcome to the rice fields motherfucker. Still, I can't help but feel that this shit feels off. I mean, those very same streets are domed and doomed by homicidal cops. The graveyard is haunted. The owner of the temple relies on patronage to pay his crippling medical bills. And the rice fields have aliens as well as a fucking sniper gunning down all who enter. Hello, are you a criminal? Uh, no. The number of crime stamps you have is zero. You are not a criminal. Yet. The routines often make for these really adorably observable vignettes. Like drunk loser and stressed lady over here running the local bar. In the morning, loser man will toss and turn as he sleep as lady man gets ready choking out some chickens in preparation for bar. In the evening, Fatso will get up and take his meat car for a spin to the interest of no one, after which he'll return to complain like a bitch and start drinking, as the missus tries to run this shoddy shithole with this song playing over the radio. All the while, the quirky little animations and these teensy weensy postman badass assets just make it really fun to watch. And that's kind of the thing too, Tulip has plenty of stories like these, all of which can be resolved with a kiss. Essentially changing these people's lives for better or worse, prison breaks included, through your own actions, making it rather hard not to start giving a shit. I mean, I just really wanted to help Batayan figure out his unemployment related depression and save these two's marriage, both of which being built up really well through all of the subtleties what this unsubtle game still managed to have. For example, next to the bar there's a closed down movie theater. And all of the posters around town just so happen to be of long forgotten movies featuring some actor called Goro. Which uh, also just so happens to be Fat Man's name and he also just so happens to have a bunch of film reels and cameras in his attic bathroom. It's almost as if these people are really well developed. And I do also think that the gameplay induced suffering has a pretty big dicking hand in this as well. As yeah, <laughs> Tulip is frustrating as fuck. Or tedious, more like, I guess. The thing is, is that all of the game's areas are connected by train, and this train works like how a train would in real life. Meaning that you have to pay up every time and wait for like half an hour for the fucker to arrive. Additionally, saving in Tulip can only be done at clean bathrooms, with most of them being of the not clean variety. Now, of course, you can get them cleansed by kissing a certain someone, but doing that, more often than not, goes like this. Which puts you back at the title screen, which makes you reload your save, saved all the way back home, forcing you to backtrack back out there once again, waiting on train every time. I've lost easily up to 30 minutes of game time numerous times through dying. Sometimes something's clearly sketchy, making it kind of my own fault, I guess, but other times you die by examining something as harmless as a little valve. Yeah, sure, the manual makes what need do a lot clearer, but the actual doing of the its at hand can still feel like putting your neck out on the line and sticking your dick out for these NPC fucks whom I loved, goddammit. You see, a side effect of all this waiting on time that needs to be done is that you get to spend time with these people. 
I wasn't just sitting in the bar all night because I fucking wanted to. I had to, to be able to talk to Miss Lady at the right fucking time to get a bottle of wine for the monk's daughter so she could give it to the charcoal man. So they could do battle so we could take a sword and cure the monk's curse, only fuck you, get hurt during a cutscene and probably die, you little bitch. Because I spent so much time dicking around and fucking my ass, I ended up observing, talking and relating to everyone at some point. I mean, I may have gotten Batay on a job earlier on, but due to all of the frequent trainage, I caught him during rush hour a few times and uh, oh boy, <laughs> did he love his job. I thought about happiness all day today. I used to be happy just by singing. I used to love singing. I'm so tired and I don't feel like singing. I only feel happy when I'm sleeping. Ugh, wow. <laughs> that has to be relatable for any creative person. Trying to work a 9 to 5 fuck job. I mean, sure, it brings in the money, but it also crushes dreams, ambitions, libidos, and creative drives. And Tulip explores that in a number of creative ways. Like, the kissing thing may very well be a blatant allegory for becoming a big man, boy man, tale of growth man, but I'd say that it's also a way of showing off how one can bring a wee bit of happiness into someone's life just through being nice and willing to listen. Basically, what I'm saying is that there's a lot of subtext beneath the game's already very thematically loaded literal text. Analyzing all of it would mean spoiling what makes suffering through this piece of shit worth it, so I won't, but I will say that it is tedious for the sake of it. Sure, it manages to be an interesting story with themes up the ass, but it's the interactivity that tips it over the edge, pushing this barely playable mess into endlessly frustrating greatness.